Awesome. Hey, all you YouTubers. It's Libris Blood here. And, like I promised, today is the start of a new series that I will be having on the channel. Now, this series will go up every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's the plan. Okay, that is the plan. Um, but the game I will be playing through is Always Remember Me. It is a Viz novel, but it is a little different than your usual everyday Viz novel. Uh, and as you can tell by the heart and the really uh, old school soap opera, soap opera kind of feel, it is a romance Viz novel. Now, I'm not opposed to playing other types of Viz novels, but I chose this one to start because I have played through it before, uh, like I did with 100% Orange Juice. I have played through this before, and I've only gotten one of the paths for one of the uh, males that you can choose to date, or to go after, if you'd rather. Um, we're going to actually start this. Uh, and I, even though I did say I have played this before, I am not going to do hard difficulty. Even though it says, for experienced players. Now here's my reasoning. Yes, you have experience playing the game if you play through it once, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're an experienced player. I'm going to pick normal difficulty, but and uh, the standard intro, but yeah, I'm not experienced at playing this game. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of things that the game has that's extra compared to other biz novels. It does have uh, your usual, you know, day, time of day, and the whole week system. You, uh, But in this one, you have money to buy gifts or to buy upgrades, quote-unquote, uh, for your character. Uh, you have four stats here, and each of these stats correlates to one of the males that you can go after. I'm going to keep probably saying male. I will probably switch what I'm going to say for that throughout this, but yeah, so... Each of the guys that you're going after has a particular trait that they like. Uh, so it's culture, creativity, romance, and discipline. So each of them specifically like one of those. So it's best to know which one uh, likes what, and then you can upgrade that and make it a little bit easier for you to talk to them. You also have morale and energy down here. So morale pretty much it determines your attitude when you're doing a particular task or when you're talking to people. Uh, and especially when it comes to making money, morale is very important. Energy is also important in the, fit, in the fact that it kind of determines how many things you can do in a day. Now you don't want these to drop too low, so I will be keeping an eye on these. And there will be some parts that um, I might cut out just so I can boost up energy and I can keep producing more content of it of this game you just it's, it gets kind of boring when you see that but um, yeah so we're gonna do the standard intro and like I said I'm not I'm still working on voices a little bit so luckily for me this game has not a lot of female voices for me to do it has a few but not not a lot so, all right. <clears throat> we were walking together, hand in hand, watching as the sun descended beneath the horizon. The evening was wearing on, and the warm colors of twilight were starting to fade from the sky. And the main character's name is Amarantha. I will refer to her as Amy, because that's easier for me. <laughs> Uh, I have not met somebody who's been named Amarantha. If you do, if you have, please uh, let me know in the comments. That's it's a very unique name. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just like it's one of those names you don't see that often. I don't know what to do. You're doing enough. Don't worry about things so much. But he still doesn't approve of me. Do you think he doesn't like my job? Maybe he thinks it doesn't earn enough money. Or that 
I should be doing something better? I, I would like to do more, but it's the best part-time job I could find. His eyes were sympathetic as he looked down at my worried expression. I know he feels bad that his father, Osher, it's another name, if you know somebody, please, it's, it's an odd name, um, Osher was creating so much grief for us, but I also knew that the situation was going to be difficult when I decided to stay with him. I don't think it's your work. He can be pretty stubborn. I know some people think that I could do better. It's not like a job at an ice cream parlor, parlor is anything special. So yeah, that is your job. You work at an ice cream parlor, so it's uh, kind of like a job you would get for the summer as a college student or something. I am attending my first year of college for creative writing. It's a natural fit since I've always loved to write poetry and prose. I had to take a part-time job during the summer to pay for my studies. Now that's a real student right there. Getting the job to pay for their studies. Um, because you, you'll find out later on why that's very admirable for what she's doing. Uh, not a lot of students choose to do that. And especially for the line of work that she's going into, that's very difficult. Uh, I can empathize with her very much because I am also going in some form of art. Uh, I do cre count creative writing as an art form because it is difficult to do and it's very hard to duplicate. Some girls in my class have really good summer jobs. Honestly, I don't think he'd approve of any girl without a lot of persuading first. I'm wondering if I'm doing this voice right now. <clears throat> I don't think it's anything personal. He just, he's just being stubborn. Yes, but after all this time, I really thought that he would have formed up to me by now. Ah, the ultimate problem. <laughs> Trying to get your significant other's parents to like you. He just doesn't understand that we're serious about our relationship. Or he doesn't want to understand. It's been, it's just so exasperating. Since everyone else has been so supportive of, of us. He'll come around eventually. It's just a matter of time. And the little anger symbol on her face. The, I almost didn't notice that the first time coming through the game. Uh, I hope so. I just wish he wouldn't object almost every time he finds out we're going out on a date. I know, but it'll get better soon. I promise. I love the soundtrack of this game. <laughs> We reached the staircase that led back to the boardwalk and parking lot. Even over the sand dunes, I could see where Aaron's motorcycle was parked. We were about to descend the stairs when he stopped and turned around to face me. He took my other hand in his and leaned down, gently kissing me on the lips. I couldn't help but smile lightly, feeling my anxiety melt away. Don't look so worried all the time, okay? You're much more beautiful when you're smiling, Amy. I returned the smile and leaned up to kiss him again. You're such a romantic. You make it sound like a bad thing. We both laughed as we ascended the stairs, still hand in hand. Now the first thing is first, he does not look like the kind of guy who would get a motorcycle. And the second thing of why I say, the second reason why I say that, or one of the reasons I say that, is he doesn't have, now, most people think it's a style to just wear the leather jacket if you own a motorcycle. No, that's a, le that's a level of protection for yourself if you get knocked off your bike. 
the leather is supposed to be uh, protective of you. Like it's kind of like wearing body armor or something to that effect. So it's not just for style. Some sometimes yes, if you like really trick out whatever leather jacket you're wearing, but like for the most part, it's there for protection. Uh, it's kind of really dangerous to ride a motorcycle without it. <clears throat> this is definitely how it should be. I always feel so safe with him at my side. Let's go home, alright? Okay. But can we stop for ice cream first? I get an employee discount on everything, you know? Sure. We have the best new type of ice cream Sunday now. We should split one. Sounds good. My smile grew brighter as pleasant thoughts passed through my mind. He mounted his motorcycle, and I sat on the back, wrapping my arms around his middle and holding on tightly. I rested my head against his broad shoulders and let a contented sigh escape my lips as the engine started up. The sun disappeared beneath the horizon, and the darkness of night began to overtake the sky. We sped out of the parking lot in less than a minute and onto the nearly empty road that led back into town. The trees blurred as we flew down the road. We were only driving for a short while before a strange feeling of foreboding settled over me. I shivered involuntarily, despite the warm temperature and squeezed Aaron tightly, watching as it got darker and darker on the one-way road. I was thinking of what to make for us for breakfast in the morning when we reached an intersection. We waited patiently for the light to change color. When the green circle let off its artificial glow, Aaron resumed driving. We had just entered the intersection when, very, very suddenly, I heard it. What? I looked up, eyes wide with confusion to see another car barreling down the road, swerving back and forth as it approached us. Aaron tried to steer away from the oncoming vehicle, but there was no hope of evasion. The car made no attempt to brake as it passed through the red light and collided with us. All I remembered before the hellacious sound of the crash and losing consciousness was Aaron turning the motorcycle to try and protect me from being directly hit. And as you can see, the morale went down there. When I opened my eyes, the brightness of the lights were above me were almost blinding. Though I had never spent very much time in a hospital, I recognized the scent of disinfectant and various other cleaners to be similar to what one smelled in a doctor's office. That's kind of odd. I, I don't know. I don't spend a lot of time at hospitals, but I rarely actually smell that ever. But she must have a really nice, uh, really nice and strong nose. Hmm. Where am I? It took me another moment of waiting for my eyes to adjust to the bright lights before I remembered what had happened. My eyes widened in horror at the vividness of the memory. Aaron! I sat up abruptly, feeling a dull ache when I moved. I forgot that actually dropped me a lot more morale again. Yeah, that happened. So, depending on her mood, or what happens to her or people near her, her morale can go down. So moments like these, like the beginning, like that's the biggest amount where like it just happens so often. Alright. A nurse out in the hallway heard my son cry and her quickly hurried inside my room. Oh crap, there's no there's a the nurse. Miss, please lay back down. You weren't seriously injured in the crash, 
but we would like you to rest before we decide if you're ready to be released. I will be looking after you until that time comes. Your injuries are minimal, only minor bruising, but we can't let you leave just yet. We... we were in a car accident, right? That's correct, but please lay back down. We are very glad to see you conscious, but the rest is imperative. That's my best nurse voice. I don't know, I, I feel like it's just like that kind of feeling of automatedness sometimes when you hear what they say. It's like, because you go through so many patients that go through something similar um, when you're in the office a lot, I feel, and like it would kind of sound kind of like that. I reluctantly, I, I reluctantly laid back down, but I was completely awake and not letting the woman leave before I heard a proper explanation. Can you tell me what happened? What about the man who was with me, Aaron? Is he okay? The nurse's expression seemed to darken slightly when I mentioned him which made me worry even more. What happened? I have to know. I'm not fully aware of the situation. I need to call Dr. Rayner. He can explain everything to you. I love how like, she didn't really change her expression all that much. She still has a smile on her face. That kind of bothered me when I went through this. It was just like, you're, you're explaining something that is kind of horrible, but you're smiling. Uh, I don't know. There, there's like that small disconnect. I waited impatiently, dissatisfied with the nurse's quick departure. It only took a few moments for a handsome young man in a doctor's uniform to enter the room. I was surprised to see that he wasn't all that much older than Aaron and I, most likely a fresh graduate out of medical school. Now that gives hope to all of you in medical school. You can become a doctor pretty quick. Hopefully, if you're good, you gotta study. And he has the most ridiculous name. <laughs> good evening, Amy. I'm very glad to see you're awake. My name, uh, my name is Eddie Rayner. But you can call me Eddie. The man said with a warm smile, revealing perfectly white teeth. Yes, yes, good evening. What time is it? Is it still Saturday? Uh, yes. Secretly, uh, she can't see. Oh. Never mind, I don't know what I'm talking about. Actually, it's technically Sunday. It's three in the morning. I'd be happy to answer your questions, but you should probably get back to bed soon. I'm not doing anything until I find out what happened to Aaron. I think that was supposed to be an exclamation point, so I kind of goofed on that. <laughs> the doctor's smile faded, his reaction much like the nurse's. So this is what the nurse was supposed to look like, I'm pretty sure. like the. The eyebrows like sunk in and then the frown. Just like that look in your eye, like the look in the eyes that is just like, I don't know how to tell you this in the right way. That's the kind of look that she, the nurse should have had, but she was smiling. And the tears. Unable to hold back my growing worry, I found myself starting to yell as tears gathered in my eyes. I have to know what happened to him. Please, is he all right? Eddie stood up and nodded toward the door, motioning for me to follow. I felt my heart sink and began to fill with cold dread. He noticed the fear of my expression and gave me a brief explanation. I'd rather show you his current condition. But I assure you, he's fine, and his life is in no danger. 
he has sustained a head injury. He will recover, and it doesn't seem to have done any severe damage, but he has lost some of his memories. So this is the big plot in the game. When I actually looked through this the first time, uh, or what is, what is that one movie? It's like a Nicholas Sparks movie, but instead of the girl losing the memories, it's the guy. So that's kind of where this whole thing, like, I don't, I don't remember what the movie was, but yeah, so it's kind of like that situation, but in reverse. We're still trying to observe the specifics of just what he has forgotten. I feel like Eddie's voice just got like deeper now. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll work out the voices later. <clears throat> As the nurse probably told you, your injuries are minimal. Please, follow me. I can take you to him, so you can see that he's alright. I hurried, pulling on a pair of slippers that had been left beside my bed, and followed after the young doctor as he led me out of the hospital room and into the hallway, listening attentively to every word he said. From what I can tell, he was trying to protect you during the crash. We're keeping you overnight for observations, but... Other than some bruises, you're perfectly okay. You don't have any broken bones or severe internal bleeding, thanks to Aaron's efforts. Because that's what every person wants to hear. Oh, I forgot her morale actually dropped earlier, too. She's down to 30 morale. She's not very happy at all. Which makes sense. Uh, but yeah, that's the, that's the one thing you want to hear. Your boyfriend protected you, so you're okay, but they're kind of messed up. Like, even though he's putting in a better, in better phrasing than that, and wow, yeah, I forgot, she dropped down even more. Yeah, um, <laughs> she's at 10 morale, she's just like, done with everything. Um, but yeah, so this, this it kind of gets... It starts really heavy for this game. I felt my heart wrench as I followed him through the hallways. He wasn't walking very quickly. Apparently, consciousness of how our conscience, apparently, conscientious of how tired I felt. Oh gosh. All these large words are gonna screw me up for the voices. Aaron. From what we can tell, Aaron is suffering from amnesia. He still retains long-term memories, but recent ones from the past few years are hazy or non-existent. He's quite a bit confused at the moment so we want to be sure not to cause him any unnecessary emotional stress. We need him to regain his memory on his own, but it will be in slow steps. I... I... I see. This is my studio. I know this is a lot to take in. So please feel free to ask me any questions you might have. He still remembers his family, but he doesn't seem to recall anything from recent years. Y you mean he doesn't remember me? And there goes the title in there. I'm sorry. We asked him about having a girlfriend, but he doesn't seem to remember anyone by the name of Amy. I felt the tears I'd been determined not to cry welling up again, ready to fall. I... I see. We walked through, the, through a doorway and into a room with a glass window that let me see into Aaron's room. I'm 
sorry to ask this of you, but since we don't want to cause him any grief or aggravate his condition, I must ask that you do not meet with him yet. He's very confused and needs rest. I understand. More tears. I remained there for a very long time, watching him and letting tears silently slip down my cheeks. His two nurses spoke to Aaron, a war perplexed expression. How, how could you forget all about me? Alright, so now this is the map. Oh boy, I don't even know how long this has been going, so I'm gonna go till you meet one of the other guys that, the other suitors. Ah, there we go, that's the word I was looking for earlier. But yeah, so you can move between locations using the map. Right now, you can only return back to your home, but later in the game, you'll be able to move wherever, to move where you want. I feel like it should have said wherever you want, but oh well. Your home. You live with Aunt Gwenda and your cat, Nina. I was released from the hospital in the morning and came right home. When I walked inside, I was greeted with a soft meow when my cat, Nina, brushed up against my leg. Hi, Nina. Did you miss me? I smiled and reached down to pet her affectionately, though I couldn't help but remember how Aaron would always fuss over her. You know, a great judge of character, and she adored Aaron, even before he started bringing treats for her all the time. Aaron always loved cats so much. <laughs> he loved big cats and little cats like you, but you were always his favorite kitty. Nina cuddled my fingers affectionately when I kneel, knelt down to pick her up. But Aaron has probably forgotten about you too. The sadness I had been trying to keep out of the front of my mind returned as I pulled my cat into an embrace and sighed. See, that's, that's kind of what sucks about this. Like, you're going through this at the beginning. And before you get the opportunity to do anything, it's just like giving you all this background, like things that remind her, Amy of Aaron and all this other thing. Like she was already worried about the dad not liking her and their whole relationship. Now she has to deal with Aaron doesn't remember me. Uh, but all of these things are here to remind me of the good times that he now no longer remembers at this moment. It's just like, it, it's kind of heavy. I had slept very poorly and the fatigue from the crash hadn't worn off. I lost my parents in a car accident and now looks like I'm going to lose the man I love to one as well. I actually forgot about that. See, that's the messed, pro messed up part about this, like how they wrote it. Is she lose? That's why she lives with her aunt Gwenda. She loses her parents in a car wreck, and now her boyfriend, the man that she loves above everything else, no longer has his memories because of a car accident. And she's still alive and here. Like, that's the biggest, like, slap in the face. It's just like, why me? You know. I sat in the living room with Nina on my lap when Gwenda came in to, com to comfort me. I was going to say confront me. <laughs> com com comfort me. Oh, my God. Amy, what happened? I think I screwed up the lines there, and doing an older voice is a little difficult. 
I briefly tell her about the accident. She was overjoyed to know that I was alright, and that I had hardly been hurt. Oh, thank God you're okay. But why didn't you call me? I will work on Gwenda's voice. I'm saying this now because that is probably my worst attempt at an old, old voice. Male or female. The doctor said I was alright and I didn't want you to worry about me. I had been staying with my Aunt Gwenda for several years. Since my parents passed away when I was still young, Gwenda had taken care of me ever since. She's a kind woman, and I greatly appreciate how caring she had always been to me. However, her pension wasn't enough to fully pay for my college tuition, which is why I took the part-time job at the ice cream parlor. See, that's why I said it's very admirable. Because she, in the situation that she's in, I, it doesn't matter what job she had to take. She, had, she chose to get a job, and, you know... It's nice when family helps you, but you can't just, like, forever just go off of that. And it's really nice to kind of, like, see that she kind of, yeah, it's a crappy job. But, you know, one of those situations. Alright. You can now make... Oh, this is not Amy saying this now. <clears throat> you can now make your first choice. Several icons will pop up showing all the possible actions in this location. So every location has a certain number of actions. Uh, in the house, there's the living room with Gwenda, um, and then there's your bedroom. So there are different actions there. I think at start, there's like three in each. Um, right. On each icon, you, you'll, you will see a brief description and the effects of the action. Each choice consumes at least one turn of game time. So you see how there's that bar up there that says Sunday, and then above that is noon. So each of these bars is one turn of game time. Uh, before before it's asked, uh, no, moving from place to place does not take up that action. Some actions are available only during certain periods of the day. For example, Aunt Gwenda goes to bed very early, so you won't find her hanging around at late hours. Uh, Aunt Gwenda goes to bed very early, so I won't find her. Yeah, so that's common. You, know, you wouldn't see uh, Grandma up and about at like 2 in the morning. So they at least played that it's realistic. Um, so yeah, it's now noon, so a good thing to to do could be to eat something or you can just relax and read a book so yeah amy's a big reader which um is actually pretty cool i'm not that big into reading but you know it's it's whatever uh i will read an old book before i talked with gwenda i think she just needs to relax and kind of get her mind in a better place. I really hope it is not a romance novel that she's reading because that would be sad. I've forgotten that the characters in this book were so fun. Good, she read a fun book. The last thing she needed was to read a book that was really sad. Uh, and now we will talk with Gwenda because I don't think watching TV is the best idea in this situation plus you get some stats increased uh, like you see culture I'm trying to remember which which guy does the culture thing I know so the ones I do know are the two guys that you've met already and that's Aaron and Eddie yes Eddie the doctor the very successful and attractive young doc male doctor that is one of the other two options are one of the other three options besides Aaron. Uh, and of course him being a doctor, the stat that he likes the most is discipline. 
he likes having structure. So there's that. Romance obviously being Aaron. Uh, so I can't remember which one's culture. I think we will see him soon because I think the other one is creativity from what I remember. I'm, I'm thinking of their faces in my uh, picture of their face in my mind right now and I'm pretty sure I have it right. So, I don't know. Yes, dear? What's troubling you? Yeah, I really need a better old person's voice. Aaron doesn't remember me at all. The doctors say that they don't want to give him too much stress since it might make him forget more or it might make it harder for him to remember what he has forgotten. Honey, I'm sure he'll remember you soon enough. You're the love of his life. The two of you were so close. The cutest little lovebirds in town. It's just these past few years that he's forgotten, though. What if he doesn't recover? Then you'll just make him love you again. I feel like that's just like a, a really like um, some advice that you would get from somebody who's like experienced a lot of part aspects of life and just like it's never too late that kind of a, that kind of uh mindset so that's a really nice um set of advice that she that Gwenda gives you really you think that would work yeah you think that would work i'm so afraid that we might never be together again we have so many precious memories and to think that he doesn't remember any of them I couldn't help but shudder at the thought. You'll be able to do it. In the absolute worst case scenario, you'll just have to start off from square one again. Man, Aunt Gwenda has like the best like attitude towards this whole situation. It's like very positive and that's what you really need. If this ever happened, like that that's what I would think you would need. Is like support like this uh, even if his mind doesn't recall the memories you two share his heart will still love you not even amnesia can erase that and those lines probably are gonna be not as clear um, <clears throat> I'm trying very hard to get that voice I think I think I really like Gwenda's voice sounding like that um, I don't know. Let, let me, like I said, let me know in comments. Any tips or tricks or any suggestions? Uh, you're right. Thank you, Auntie. I feel better, a bit better now. Of course, dear. That's what family is for. Uh, and in certain situations, I will add certain words just because they make a lot of sense being in a certain situation. So, uh, after talking with Gwenda, I feel... Uh, after talking with Gwenda, I feel better. Sometimes you just need to open up with someone who cares about you. That is a very true statement. So, yes. Amy, I've prepared your favorite cake. Thanks, Gwenda. I'd like to stay alone for a while and rest. Oh, but I'd like to stay alone for a while and rest, okay? I didn't sleep very well at the hospital. I had too much on my mind. That's fine, dear. Get some rest. You can eat a piece of cake tomorrow morning before going to work. Good night, Quinda. I went to my bedroom with Nina in my arms and sat down at the desk. 
I picked a notebook up and decided to try and get my feelings under control in the most familiar way I knew, writing about them. I picked up a pen and started writing a poem. Your gentle touch, the warmth of your embrace, the passion of your kiss, precious times that felt ever so divine. I thought that they would never leave, but even though I can't reach you anymore, I can't open my eyes to find you there, I'll always have my memories. Though they are not as warm as the hands that always made me feel so safe, I know they will never disappear as you now have. My beloved, my heart is forever yours, even if you're lost beyond where my trembling voice can reach you. Even if your memories fade or disappear into the darkness, I'll never forget the precious times when we faced the world together. My beloved, for today, for tomorrow, for the days that may never return, never forget the words we once exchanged. I love you. That was a very sweet poem. Alright, uh, and then I'm just gonna end it after we see the other suitor. So, when I awoke that morning, I knew that I had to go to the ice cream parlor. It was Sunday, and I had a long shift to attend to. I considered calling out, knowing that they would understand if I explained the situation, but decided that it would be best to go in, to go in anyway. Otherwise, everyone would start worry, to worry about me. I had no doubt that news of the accident was already traveling quick, uh, quickly. Gossip seemed to get around in town eerily fast. All right, uh, we're gonna actually look at some of the other plates. Nah, no, just kidding. All right, so during the summer, you work in this ice cream parlor to pay for your studies. It is a nameless ice cream parlor. Aha. It could be the ice cream parlor in your hometown. Not really. I don't, I don't see many of these. <laughs> unless you count, unless you count Baskin Robbins, but you know, this is like old school, old school like ice cream parlor. Right. I got ready and arrived at the shop 15 minutes before the start of my shift. Well, at least you're early, not late. I hadn't wanted to dwell at home, though. As soon as I walked in, I knew it was. I knew I was too early. It was still early in the morning, and there were only a few customers around. I was surprised to catch sight of a familiar face seated at one of the tables, apparently taking a break from work. Oh. And here is the other guy. Uh, I will save right here because it you can save um, exactly at that moment. So this is your co-worker, Lawrence, but we will hear more from him next episode, which will hopefully be up tomorrow. And every time I say hopefully, don't worry. Uh, and yeah, as you can see over here, I have finished the game for Aaron's story. So I will not be going down that path. Uh, however, when we get close to the ending of this, uh, of whatever path I choose for this playthrough of it, of the game, uh, we will, uh, well, we, I will go through, and I will play out through the ending, so you can kind of, hear, or actually, no, uh, I won't do that, let me take, I'm gonna take that back, what I just said right now, I won't do that, because then it ruins, a lot, there's no context, there's like a lot of things that you miss, so I will hopefully play through this, uh, for one of the stories, and if you guys really like it, I will go back and I will play through more of the storyline. Uh, you know, just go through other paths and hopefully get the other suitors and maybe going back to Aaron, but this time going for his secret ending. Uh, 
yeah, there are, I should actually explain that before we go. So each of the four guys, Lawrence included now, uh, so now you're just waiting on that fourth guy. Uh, but each of the four suitors that you can choose from has their normal ending, which you can see Aaron's normal ending uh, was the one I unlocked over there. And then they have their secret ending. Now the way to get the secret ending is that you need to find out which of your stats is the one that they care about. So for Aaron, it's love. Max out your love at 100 and then finish the story. That will give you his secret ending. Uh, if you're going for Eddie, max out discipline. Lawrence, I'm pretty sure, is the one that I mentioned earlier that is culture. Don't quote me on that. And yes, uh, he kind of looks a little nerdy, but I will not give him a very nerdy voice. Because uh, I think he's like he's one of like those cool, nerdy kind of guys. So, yeah. But thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully you, you liked this video. If you did, please uh, click like at the bottom. And if you have any tips or tricks or any suggestions, uh, if my voices were a little too low, if you couldn't hear them very well, if you have a suggestion for a style in which one character should speak or things like that, I'm always open to suggestions. I love create um, constructive criticism and it just helps me to get so much better at the game and it helps me to produce better quality content for all of you to enjoy so uh, before I start rambling this has been Libra's Blood and I'm signing out <laughs>